It's the Best Damn Sports Show podcast with your hosts, Jason Cahill and Bernie Kim. Welcome to the Best Damn Sports Show podcast. I'm Jason Cahill. I'm Bernie. Bernie, I was worried for a second. I thought uh, you'd, you'd become a prima donna. You oh, is that right? You were late. I know, I know, but hey, the Hooters Uncovered show doesn't doesn't uh, put it waits, itself together. It waits for no man, but I'll tell you, we were supposed to start this. It's one ten right now uh, here in L.A., and, and we were supposed to start at 1 o'clock, and, and at 1 o'clock I looked to my right, and the chair was empty. I'm sorry. What can I say? I thought you were you were holding out. I thought you were pulling like a Steven Jackson. Oh, you know, I, you know, I am looking for more money to come out of this deal, and... Uh, we can renegotiate. Okay, I will renegotiate. Yeah. yeah. What do you? What is your current salary for the podcast? Uh, zero. Okay. So uh, I will give you ten I'll times give you, that. I'll give you ten times that. That's, is that good? That's done. Deal. <laughs> I will never be late again. <laughs> Somehow I doubt that. Uh, hey, let's uh, let's talk about the week that was on Best Am. And I gotta say, it was a real good week. It was, it was great and random at the same time. Would you say? I, I would little... say. I would say you're you're on the money. Great and random. Uh, we, we had some, some pretty cool guest hosts. We had Adam Carolla here, who is always great. He's always funny. Uh, Kevin Hench from FoxSports.com, great opinions. We like him. And, uh, and Jason Whitlock also from FoxSports.com and the Kansas City Star. So whenever you put that group together, you can pretty much throw out any topic, no matter what, and they're going to come back with something good and something interesting. The, uh, the talent meetings this week were great, right? Yes. Just yeah. In the talent meeting, we go over the topics with the, the host of the show and the, and the guest hosts, and we try to gauge their opinion. And they were just shooting back and forth, you know, stuff that they couldn't necessarily say on the air. But, but you know, Hench is, Hench is a guy who he will share his opinion to anyone who will listen. And, you know, he's got an interesting, funny take on pretty much anything. It could be sports, it could be non-sports related. But, you know, if you're walking down the hall and you pass Hench, he's, he's, he might just stop you and talk about, you know, how the, how the Red Sox botched the game the night before or, or something like that. But, you know, he's great. So in the talent meetings, he's got a take on everything. And, of course, Jason Whitlock's got a take on everything. And sometimes those takes don't mesh together, which makes for great television. So uh, I think we had some great shows this week. And we also had some pretty cool guests. Uh, you know, Serena Williams joined us on remote. Um, you know, I, I think I said to somebody, Serena looked like she was um, she was a bit drowsy during the interview. Well, looked I like mean, she may fall asleep at the beginning. But, you know, that, that could be the result of doing, um, you know, interview after interview. She was on a satellite media tour. And you get that sometimes because, you know, we're on the West Coast, so sometimes – our interviews are going to be the last ones that they do. So I'm guessing Serena had done maybe about 10 or 11 interviews before us. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's understandable. She was in China, too, winning a gold medal with her sister and playing in the singles events as well. So uh, I'm, I'm playing the world's uh, smallest violin now for Serena Williams. Wow. Boo-hoo. Wow. Okay. I, won, I won a gold medal, and I'm tired. I, it's, it's a lot of jet lag. It's a like 12-hour difference. You know, and another thing that she said during the interview, which really it, it surprised me, like you see guys like Kobe and LeBron, you know, they're watching Phelps almost every night when he's swimming, which is great. I love that they're over there, and they're kind of taking in the whole Olympic experience. Serena said she didn't see one event. She didn't yeah. see one Olympic event. It's it's a little silly. You'd think that she'd you know take the time to take in. I guess she's over it. I don't know. Maybe maybe she's. I don't know. She's I, I been mean, to the Olympics before. Well, so what? Okay. You know, I mean, so have the guys on on, on Team USA or, or some of them, but you know, they were there cheering on Phelps. I, I just think there's such there's so many great moments going on in Beijing right now that you know for Serena to be like, no, I'm just here to play tennis. Yeah. Come on. She's maybe she's just jaded. Come on. Hey, uh, one real cool guest we had this week. We had Rain Wilson from oh, yeah. from The Office Dwight. and his new movie, The Rocker. Now, I, I don't know if this has ever happened before, but when he came here, the first thing he wanted to do was to take a shower, yeah. <laughs> which doesn't really happen very often with our guests. You know, they don't come and say, hey, uh, before I go on the air, I'd love to take a shower. No, it doesn't happen very often. And so when I went into his dressing room to say hello to him, he was shirtless, and his belt buckle was undone. <laughs> so he reaches out his hand, and he says, hi, I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, isn't, this isn't the first time for you to that has happened with a guest. Am I wrong? You mean for a guest to introduce oh, himself not, to me while he was naked? No, I'm thinking about it. It was a, a guest, host. guest host. I don't want to name names. <laughs> but he, didn't he just, you were talking to him about the show, yeah. and then he just took off his pants right in front of you. He did. He did. Yeah. We, again, we don't want to name names, but this is a former guest host. Took off his pants and boxers, <laughs> just like it was nothing. The guy dropped trowel right in front of me. <laughs> that was that was unreal. I didn't even mention it. it. He acted like 
it wasn't happening. Like, <laughs> like I wasn't. Taking his shoes off or yeah. something. Like, yes, I'm standing here, and here's my penis. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, his face was expressionless. It was crazy. I thought yeah, okay, somebody so was setting me up yeah, for a joke. Talking about the Super Bowl, and then boom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so Rain Wilson comes, takes a shower, uh, says hello to me in, in a half state of undress, but, but great on the air. Great. Fantastic. Two segments, super funny. Uh, knows his sports, and I love that he's a big fantasy football guy, too, Yeah, which was great. I, I love when guys come here, and, you know, I don't know if you expect them to be sports fans or not, but Rain Wilson, great fantasy football like, fan, newest stuff. When they talk about the way they draft or the teams they follow or just the intricacies of that yeah. kind of stuff, it's like you can relate to them. It's like they're just, you yes. know, they do the same things we do, except they make millions of dollars. They do. But, uh, yeah, and the cool thing was he was saying, you know, how they do their fantasy draft uh, at the office. They just pass a piece of paper around during taping of the show. And they write their picks on it, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, another guest we had this week. Everybody was excited about this one. It's funny, like the guests that people get excited about. But Alfonso Ribeiro, formerly Carlton Banks. So excited about yeah, him. Yeah, people were, were, they couldn't wait to see him. I mean, it, I think Carlton is probably the most underrated like TV character <laughs> of like the last 30 years. Is he underrated? I mean, you go on YouTube and you type in Carlton Dance. But, and but nobody really talks about The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air being a great show or a hilarious show. No, they talk about, hey, that's how Will Smith got his start. Exactly. Of but that was a really funny show, and Carlton was such a great, great character. Yeah, he, he was good. And that dance is Right. Is Obviously, prices. the Carlton Dance is what everybody knows him for. So, you know, he came on the show, and Bernie, you had the good idea to... Have him judge a Carlton dance-off. So uh, you and one of our other producers, Zeus, and Bill Bellamy, who was here uh, earlier in the week, uh, all did the Carlton dance, and he watched, and he judged. He, he actually didn't like, he didn't he didn't like, like any. any. He didn't like any of them. Although I thought yours was the best. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Right. I've been working on that for a while. I thought yours was good, and uh, I actually thought they were all pretty decent. I thought, you know, Zeus really sold it. Yeah, he, he, had, the, he had the charisma. Yeah. Not necessarily the technical parts <laughs> down, but he had the charisma. <laughs> but... Uh, but the look of glee, Bernie, on your face while you were doing the <laughs> dance is pretty awesome. But then after, after the segment, uh, I, I, I went up to him and asked him, because he said after when he saw the three, he said, no, none of them really had the, the shimmy down. There's like, a, like, you move the arms and you leg shimmy. Right. Well, the, and cool, so, yeah. the, the cool thing was at the end of the segment, he actually got up and did the Carlton dance, which we, I didn't think he did. We weren't do. expecting it. Because I'll tell you, I did the pre-interview with him. And, you know, you bring it up, and he, I think his quote to me was, that's something that's, it's been in my rearview mirror for some time now. Uh, but not like, not, he wasn't saying it like as a jerk. You know, he was like, you know, oh, I've been there, done that, I love it, I did it once, and I took it to mean, hey, please don't ask me to do the Carlton dance <laughs> on the air. And though we did, and he kind of, you know, he, had he didn't even hesitate, it. he had fun with it. it and was then great. He, he gave me some pointers after this segment. He just, he's great. That, that dance is fantastic. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's I really, love that dance. Yeah, and he was he was great too. Hey, uh, guess what? We got an email. Yeah. All right. We got it. We got an email to uh, at, to our email address at bestdampodcast at yahoo dot com, and uh, it's a question that I think I think we should we should tackle this one next week on our show. And I say this because it's it has to do with wrestling. We have Ric Flair on the show next week. Woo! And and I'm a huge wrestling guy. And this is an interesting question. And the question is this: He asks if you had to field. A football team comprised of only professional wrestlers who would play at each position. Now, this guy, whose who's name, by the way, you, you, will, you will recognize the name, David Tremonti. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard of him. I've right. heard of him before. So, David, uh, thanks for the email. We'll, we'll definitely touch on this more next week. But he says Mr. Perfect will be his quarterback. So I don't want to go into it right now. I'm just going to say probably next week on the podcast we will uh, we'll tackle this. Maybe we'll have a guest who can kind of help uh, – assign each of the positions. That's not bad. I wouldn't pick Mr. Perfect, though. I'm going to say that right now. I would not pick Mr. Perfect as my quarterback. I'll tell you who I would pick next week. How about we wow, i got to wait. So, David, thanks for the email. And, uh, of course, anybody who wants to email us, it's bestdampodcast at yahoo.com. And see, we read emails on the air. <laughs> and, look, this one even became fodder. a podcast. Yeah. This is going to be a podcast. Pod so, fodder. So, David, thanks so much. Uh, we should get to our first guest. Let's do it. Our first guest has more money than you and I combined. Yes. Well, actually, probably all the guests on the podcast have more money than you and I combined. Is that fair to say? I would also venture to say this person has gambled more than yeah. we have in one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he just won his first World Series of Poker bracelet, which is just great because it couldn't happen to a better guy. It is poker pro Eric Lindgren. Eric Lindgren, what's up? Welcome to the Best Damn Sports Show podcast. Oh, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Hey, and uh, congratulations 
on the World Series bracelet. Yeah, that, that uh, big monkey off my back. I appreciate it. <laughs> have you have you worn it? Have you even taken it off since you've won it? Oh, I uh, actually I took it up, uh, went and saw the family, and just gave it to my father, and he told me that he's probably going to put it on eBay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how much you think? Uh, how much you think the bracelet would get on eBay? I has think it... he'd take anything over like twenty bucks. Hey, has a World Series of Poker bracelet ever been sold on eBay? Uh, I don't know, but I heard there was a couple in pawn shops around town. Uh, I, won't, I won't leave the names of the guys I heard left in there. Oh, no. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, so, hey, congrats, and obviously a big relief for you. No, no doubt. It was actually a bigger relief than I even thought it would be. I, it didn't seem like that big a deal to me, but once I won, and uh, it just it really hit me, and it felt good. Yeah, you, you were like the, uh, the Peyton Manning of the poker world before Peyton won his Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, I would have taken uh, John Elway, but, you know, have it your way. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, that's a future Hall of Famer right there. <laughs> so are you... Uh, do you that was Elway, my do God. You, do you feel like you're any better or worse of a poker player now that you have this bracelet? I mean, does it... What, what does it mean, you know? I might be worse. I may not try as hard anymore, so we'll have to find out <laughs> next year come the World Series. You think it's uh, changed people's perception of you? Yeah, unfortunately it does. Uh, I, I think definitely people think I'm a better player because I had a bracelet, and, and that's fine. I mean, you got to keep track somehow, and really the other, only other way is uh, money won and lost, and nobody's really uh, going to tell you how that came down. Yeah. Hey, so now that you are no longer the best player to never have won a bracelet, who do you think is the best player to have never won a World Series bracelet? Oh, uh, there's, uh, there's some great players out there. A couple European players, Patrick Antonis, David Benamine, uh, my man Gavin Smith is on the list for sure. Um, Greg Mueller out of Canada is a good player. Um, wow, I got two Canadians, two Europeans. There's got to be a good American guy. Um, <laughs> How about Jason Cahill? Uh, uh, Tom Juwan, Justin Bonomo. You're going to see those guys win bracelets real soon. <laughs> How about that guy, Jason Cahill? He's never won a bracelet. Yeah, I, I saw this Jason Cahill guy in an event, and he just had stars in his eyes. Looked like he had no chance. Yeah, dead by the, money. By the way, the, the fact that you came over and said hello to me, my, my cred at the table right after you left really, really shot up. I stole like three pots in a row, so thanks for that. Oh, good. You got it with the theory. That's important. Good job. <laughs> hey, so what was the celebration the night that you won? What was that like? Yeah, I came home and I went to bed. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I was worn out, you know. There was, there was partying after the World Series, but during the World Series, it's basically uh, 45 days straight of work. So, How many events did you play? Um, I played every day at noon pretty much, unless I was... And if I was out by the evening tournament by six o'clock, I played that one as well. So basically, almost every day, noon till three a.m. Well, you must be pretty sick of that Rio buffet, right? Yeah, I never actually go to the Rio buffet. They, they've got a couple <laughs> good restaurants, real good Italian restaurant, Cafe Mortorano. So uh, that was all good. Hey, so you mentioned uh, Gavin Smith's name a little while ago. He was one of the guys who uh, you bet you had that golf bet going with last summer, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Gavin was the guy that initiated it uh, at dinner one night. Yeah, talk about that one. What, what was the bet? Um, well, I was kind of mad at myself. I busted out of the 50K horse last year. Um, I busted out like 35th or something, and I played just terrible. So I was like, you know, I should just punish myself, go walk a course in Vegas. It's 108 degrees. I'll walk it four times. And he goes, you must be crazy on drugs. So whenever you say somebody's crazy and you believe the other side, we end up getting some money down on it. And then I ended up getting more money on it, and I ended up having to do the bet, which was not very smart, but I won. Wow, three hundred fifty thousand—is that right? Yeah, I was a little less. <laughs> Holy cow! A little less. I, I left a few, a few of the guys bought out during the last round, and that was fine. But uh, yeah, I got, got a little bit of money off everybody. So that always feels good. Now wait, did I read where you said you lost twelve pounds that day? Um, closer to fifteen. <laughs> oh my god! god. <laughs> I, was, I think I had about four. People were like, "Did you drink anything?" I'm like, "Yeah, I drank like forty or fifty bottles of water and Gatorade, and I just..." Ate bananas. And I still couldn't uh, stay hydrated. I'm not a doctor. It just doesn't sound healthy, though. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I would, if I did it again, I would bring a doctor, get yeah. a little IV. That would have been huge. <laughs> I, was, I was dizzy. The ears were ringing. I was just out of it. Hey, do you have any other uh, ongoing prop bets right now? Um, let's see, now Gavin's got a good one. He's uh, he's gone a month and a half so far. He has two and a half months left of no drinking. Which, if you know Gavin, that is hard <laughs> for him to do. So I taunt him virtually every time. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, hey, college football season starts soon. I know you are a huge college football fan. I, I know the answer to this, but tell everybody what a typical Saturday is like for you in the college football season. <laughs> typical Saturday is hanging out at my house. Everybody comes by. We're actually upgrading the system, so we'll have uh, 10 TVs in the living room so we can watch uh, hopefully every game. And uh, 
we make a few wagers on uh, every single game. Every single college football game you have a bet on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Louisiana, from Louisiana Monroe to Buffalo, we don't care. We'll, we'll bet on every single game. <laughs> do you do research? or what, yeah, what Do you, do you know, do you do you know do? all these Wait, teams? No, actually, I have a dartboard in the other room, and we just throw it up there, and whichever name it comes closer to. Well, I'm sure, like the Buffalo football team, do you, do you know anybody on that team? Uh, Drew Willie's the starting quarterback in his senior oh, year. I mean, there you go. Wow, impressive. <laughs> impressive. <laughs> that's, impressive. That's one more player than I can name. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you do last year? What was the, uh, were you plus or minus? Um, I actually think it came out plus first time in a few years. But oh, okay. uh, you know what? The people say, ah, oh, you're crazy betting money, but I have a ton of fun doing it. So I bet you do. I, I, I couldn't care less if I win or lose. Well, wow. I think I'm going to go home and tell my wife that, you know, if we have like three or 4,000 laying around, I might just give it to you. Right. Actually, just give her my number, have her give me a call, and I'll convince her. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> hey, but, the, but the, the funny thing I find about you is that, you know, when it comes to sports betting, you love betting, and yet there's one team you will never bet on or against, and that is Gonzaga. Yeah, that is the only team I'm actually a fan of in any sport. I'm just a diehard fan. I um, actually go up and doing uh, Dan Dickow's uh, charity basketball and poker game on September 3rd and 4th for my fourth year, so that's awesome. Wow. Oh, all the Gonzaga grads are. Is Stock, does Stockton go back? No, he has not played in the basketball or the poker. Hopefully we'll get John out there sometime. But he, he, he definitely is a big Gonzaga supporter. He goes to a lot of the volleyball games, basketball games, and so forth. Hey, so I was talking about this with somebody the other day. There have been a handful of poker movies over the last few years. What's Which one poker movie do you think has gotten it right? I know which has gotten it wrong. I'm pretty sure Lucky You, you know, not the best not the best poker movie in the world, right? I mean, Drew Barrymore only spoke in cliches, so that, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> so which one got it right? Uh, nobody got it right. Um, I, obviously, I, Rounders was, was decent, but still showed kind of the cheating angle, so... Nobody's gotten it right yet, and I'm not sure they want to. Hollywood wants to put stuff in a in a little box and have things done certain ways, you know. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully someday somebody will get it right. Do you happen to see Casino Royale, the the Bond movie? Yeah. And that, that... I, I've fallen asleep during that movie in hotels about five times. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think of that poker scene in that movie? Yeah, I just remember he was wearing a suit, and it was. I don't even know. I think he was wearing a tuxedo. He was wearing a tuxedo. Yeah, a tuxedo, uh, Monte Carlo probably. I mean, it, yeah, Eric, you don't wear tuxedos when you play at the Rio? I haven't yet, but I will for the right price, Cahill. Yeah, I've seen guys wear bear suits. <laughs> yeah, that was probably like Bill Spock <laughs> and Gavin Smith. Maybe. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's a, here's, a, here's a question for you. So let's say you take a guy, he knows... You know, a good deal about poker, but he's still not a great poker player. He's a decent poker player. Let's say you tutor that guy for three months, intensive tutoring. Could you turn that guy into a world-class poker player? You know, I can't just say it a blanket statement, but if you gave me, let's say you gave me 50 guys and I got to see them answer a few questions on video, something like that, where I could judge their character, uh, just look at them. Then I could, uh, if I could pick the guy, I could do it. Yeah. What if one of those guys was named Jason Cahill? Um, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. I don't really <laughs> know if I have three months for that guy. Yeah, you're no. gonna take more than that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I don't think anybody has that kind of time. That was the most <laughs> thinly veiled question that I've ever heard in my life. But I'll tell you what, I'd rather have Cahill over uh, Chris Rose any day of the week. <laughs> Rose is tough. He's, I've seen him make some good moves every once in a while. No, Rose, is, Rose has become a decent poker player, but there was a time not so long ago, this was like two, three years ago when he started doing the poker shows, I had to sit down in a room with him and explain the game to him. Uh, he, yeah, he, I mean, he didn't know anything. He's a celebrity event at, at the conference every year. He cracks me up. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's a pretty decent poker player now. He's, definitely, he's come a long way. <laughs> He's definitely come a long way. Although I think uh, I think Jennifer Tilly knocked him out of this last tournament, the one at the Commerce. Hopefully he got a hug on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> we should all be so lucky. All right, man. Hey, thanks for joining us on the podcast, and uh, continued success. All right, guys. See if you can make it up here for a little football this year. You got Sounds it, yeah. Good. Let's come up on a Saturday. All right, man. Take care. <laughs> all right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Eric Lindgren, the best E-Dog. Love that guy. See, here's what I was looking for when I asked the question about could he take a good poker player and make him a world-class poker player. I was looking for, absolutely, why don't you come up, take three months off of work, I will make you 
into a bracelet-winning World Series of Poker champion. Well, That's why, what I was looking for. Why don't you do it? Just go up there and just take take a three-month hiatus. Take a leave of absence. Yeah. Become a world-class poker player. I wonder if that would do it. You think three months? If if he if he really committed to you, yeah, then I think it could happen. I'm yeah. kind of I'm kind of serious about that. I you know. know. I, I, have I these... know you asked that question because right. you wanted no, him to say I, that. Right, exactly. Like I really think I could do that. Like every now and then I have these crazy ideas. Like I think that I could, if behind the right offensive line in the NFL, I think I could rush for a thousand yards. You are. Gravely no. mistaken on that. Not only not only do I not think I'm mistaken, but I remember, you know, back when Rodney Pete was here, I asked him, Emmett's offensive line. If I had that offensive line back in the day, could I have rushed for a thousand yards? He said yes. Rodney th- Pete, he's played in the NFL, Bernie. You I, have not. I think uh I think he was just joking. I don't know. No, 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 no. I know I know joking. That wasn't he was serious. I, he I thought think- it he thought about it. He got contemplative. And he said, you got it. You'd rush for 1,000 yards. I think, I think he was trying to complement the Cowboys line, uh, offensive line well, with, a hyper, with a hyperbole. Clearly. And by the way, one day when uh, Troy Brown was here, I asked him if I were the quarterback of the New England Patriots and not Tom Brady, how many games the Patriots would have won and would they have made the playoffs? What do you think he said? Zero. No, I know what he said. Uh, what, I, <laughs> I know he said something ridiculous like not zero, <laughs> but still. He said the Patriots would have made the playoffs with me at quarterback. No. Yeah. Me? No. Okay, you're I right. can't you're throw right. them all you're more right. than 20 yards. He said we'd make, they'd make the playoffs. You're, it, you're right. I, I believe it. Thank I you. I believe it. Can we make that happen, please? Which one? You being the quarterback or becoming a poker Either player? one. Here's, here's what I would like to see happen over the next few weeks. I want an NFL team to let me play quarterback and just okay. see what would happen. It's an interesting experiment. I want to rush behind a really good offensive line. So maybe the Browns, Jamal Lewis wants to take a seat. I'll get up there and see if I can rush for maybe 100 yards in a game. All right, I, I, just to put this all into perspective, when we were in South Florida for Hooters Week, yes. we had games demos for our show. We had the joust, <laughs> right? And yeah, I see where if, you're going if, with if, if I seem to remember correctly, you and one of our other producers, Joel, jousted each other. We did. He, there, there was a rule, no headshots. Yeah. And he got in a headshot we on did. you. You fell over like a tree. He knocked me out. I thought I was concussed. You were complaining about that all day. My head hurt all day. I thought I was concussed. Yes, but that's joust. That's joust. You, I mean, Emmett Smith being a great football player back in the day, you don't think he can he can be a good jouster? I, my but point, you don't go hand in hand. My, my point is this. My point is this. Joel got me with a lucky shot. Joel could have swung that he could have gotten a free shot at you, you just standing there with all his might and hit you in the face, and that wouldn't have been as hard as getting sacked by an NFL player. I hear you, but I'm saying if I'm behind a good offensive line, I don't think that's going to happen. They're going to protect me. I'm going to go buy them Rolex watches if I, if I rush for 100 yards. <laughs> that's incentive well, alone right there, don't right. you think? I, I suppose. I, let's, I, we, need to, we need to make this happen. I would love to see it happen. Yeah, and I really gotta, I'm really got. i going to call Eric Lindgren back and tell him I, I, was, I was pretty serious about that. <laughs> yeah, well, <I> think, <laughs> we need to make that happen. Come on. I, I think you should try that. That's what I think you should try. Okay, so we have a great week again on Best Damn next week, including there's a guest coming by who once stole my chapstick. I'm going gonna, gonna to leave it at that. We'll talk about it on the podcast next week. Maybe he will return my chapstick. Why would somebody want to use somebody else's chapstick? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question, and that is a question I asked myself last time this guest was in the studio. All right. And not just any guest. This is one of the all-time greats. Okay. Stole my chapstick. I want to see how this turns out. So there you go. Uh, hey, if you want to email us, again, the email address, bestdampodcast at yahoo.com. We will read your email on the air, as we did earlier in the podcast. And uh, who knows? Maybe we will even mention your name. Yeah. You will live in infamy on yes. iTunes and on foxsports.com. And myspace.com slash bestdampsports will appear. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, uh, we should talk about Hooters before we sign off. Oh, yeah, yeah, big show. We have uh, Sunday, the premiere, world premiere of the the Hooters 2008 swimsuit pageant. Bernie, I know who won. I do too. And but let's not let's not give it away. Not going to tell anybody. I will say this though, it's uh, it's a bit of a surprise. You think so? I thought so. Not the person I thought was going to win. Let's okay. Just, All right. Let's well, just maybe leave it at that. The, the drama is building. The favorite did not win. Really? Not necessarily the underdog, but not I think not the favorite. Okay. But right. it was a great pageant. Great pageant. As far as as far as pageants go. It's a good one. It's top. Top three. So tune in on Sunday. Uh, until then, I am Jason Cahill. And I'm Bernie. Thanks for listening to the podcast. See you next week. Bye.